Hey, welcome guys. Uh, today's project, I'm going to be working on a um, First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. Now, if you watched my um, previous video, uh, the Millennium Falcon Fish and the Cargo Barge that came from a similar type kit. Uh, sometimes you can find these on eBay for really cheap. I think I won this one for like $2 plus $10 shipping, so for like $12. Um, I know they're not the greatest models, but they're, they make for fun projects. So anyway, I built the Falcon out of that kit, and now I want to do something with the uh, TIE Fighter. So as you can see here, I have a bit of a mess going on because you know me, I like to break all these apart. So the TIE Fighter is a really simple uh, kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Um, well, I want to light this, light the engines and maybe uh, some kind of cockpit lighting. I don't know. I haven't quite gotten that far yet. Obviously, we'll be repainting this. Um, it comes in like this white and brown color. I don't like this at all. I made a spin trail and, and do my own paint job, maybe uh, Empire style with the black and blue. I don't know yet. Um, however, I do want to get started on working on the interior. So uh, we know that these... Um, Kits come with like these modules that have batteries and little sound packs. This one has makes sounds and it's a little red light that goes in here. You can tell where I've kind of pulled that out already. So um, there's a little bit of a chore separating this part. It comes glued together. I drilled out um, these parts down here. I figured those are connecting points. It only cost me a little bit of blood doing that. So be careful, the drill will go all the way through. And uh, but I did take a hobby saw, kind of cut through here, and once I got that separated, I was able to get a screwdriver and separate the rest of that. Now I do need the bottom section because there's a big hole in the bottom here, and we need that there. I'll glue that into place. There's going to be a supporting rod more than likely coming through here. That's the plan. But I wanted to open this up. I need to get to these engines. Which I do like the bigger engines on the TIE Fighters. Um, they make more sense to me, obviously. Uh, this one has a seam that splits right down the middle. I've also drilled this out like the Millennium Falcon. I drilled all these connecting points out because I know I'll constantly be checking fits. So I want this to be able to open and close. So I drilled that out a little bit <clears throat> and cut away some of them. I don't need all of them, but I want a couple just to make sure I have good alignment. Uh, this seems not too bad. We'll have to address it, but we'll have to cut away the center of the engine nozzles to get to there. Um, there's also this issue of this hatch thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I'm just going to leave it. You do get some clear parts here. The hatch obviously opens and closes somehow. I haven't, yeah, kind of fits into in this bracket right here. Uh, again, I'm not real sure what I'm going to do with that. We'll address that later. Uh, right now, I'm focused on the lighting. There's also a, a battery door that was part of the module that will need that part of it. Um, I should be able to just glue that into position and fill the seams and <laughs> sand it. I think there's a battery thing right here um, and maybe fill in that gap. So. I'm going to take care of all of that. <clears throat> doesn't come with a pilot. I don't know if I'll try to print that out. Um, maybe we'll see if we can find something that can be printed out and we can include a pilot. Um, obviously, that will go in like that. So it would be nice to have some kind of interior lighting here, maybe some red lights or something to that effect. Um, so most of the work will be done on that. Obviously, I want to give it a good paint job, make it look cool. Uh, maybe some kind of scenic display base. Uh, none of that I've thought that far ahead of right now. I'm just focused on uh, how to clear these parts. Uh, I had to cut away a section of this because it was uh, interfering with where I need to put my engine lighting, which will be right here. I'm going to do the same thing right here, even though this is not symmetrical, these, these two sides. I'm going to cut this away and give me a little bit more space to put a LED. I may be able to fit like a three millimeter red LED in there to give us our engine lighting. Um, we'll see. Um, there's some, now that I've opened it up, I have all the space for wiring. Uh, this still still sits in there pretty good. Uh, of course, we'll be gluing and painting and all that kind of stuff with it. And uh, just kind of going from there. So uh, let's just get started with this and see where it goes. All right, so here's where I'm at. As you can see, if I put in my um, 
supporting rod here, my supporting stand, and it's at an angle because I kind of want to incorporate this into a scenic display and I want the ship canted a little bit. Uh, you can see where I've now added in some lights. Uh, these are five millimeter. There aren't. I just didn't have red and so um, instead of waiting on some LEDs to get here, I did have some orange five millimeters. Um, just kind of glued into position uh, into those nozzles we open up. Obviously, I uh, ran these wires down through. I connected the two to one and then ran it down through here. So that's ready to go. Uh, and got my uh, interior ready. Now, I did have to trim a lot. This did come around uh, to get everything to fit nice and snug in there. I had to do a lot of trimming on this. You can see where I've added in some styrene right here, just some... Uh, thin styrene to help block uh, the lights here. So this will fit into here and then we'll have our cockpit and those will uh, conceal the orange light coming from there. There might be a little bit of bleed uh, around the sides, but that's okay. It'll just light the interior. Uh, the cockpit glass will still fit in here. If I can get it to fit in, maybe I have it the wrong way. Let's see, let's try it that way. There it goes. And then the top will fit over, and then we'll have our lights shining through there, and then we'll have our cockpit. I don't have a good figure, but you can't really see in there too much anyway, so I'm not terribly worried about it. So here's where I really kind of decided um, just kind of do my own thing, have fun with this. I'm not going to use these uh, solar arrays or panels, whatever you want to call them. I will be using most of the other parts. So what I did is I printed out, excuse me, some uh, interceptor type wings. And how I did these were, I went on to Thingy first and I found a interceptor type fighter, took that uh, file, imported it into Tinkercad and basically removed the rest of the ship all except for the panel. I did uh, add in a space for it to connect into the ship. And you can see here where I've added in some tubing on the guns to give it a better look. And when it prints out, this is what it looks like. Um, there was a lot of cleanup on the supports. As you can see here, there's a lot of supports that I got to remove. This is going to be the other side. Uh, all the stringiness is this from the supports. So once I got it done, um, this is what it came out to. But I did have a lot of cleanup. Uh, the supports were... Uh, left a lot of small bits of plastic inside all this detail here. So anyway, and what I'll be doing, I'm still going to use these. And I think these are for like the hyperdrive, that's something that was added in. Uh, that's still going to fit into position. That also helps lock your body down. Uh, the two halves of your body helps lock those down. And then this will come into here, something like that. And then I can still use this other piece. It will still lock in like that. So that's what I'm going for. Now, I think I made the wings a tad bit small, but it took quite a while to print those out. So uh, I'm just having fun with this. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, if, uh, if I ever redo it, uh, I would make these a little bit bigger, probably about 20, 25% bigger. Probably have a better look. But I don't think it's terrible. I just think... It's a tad bit small for the size of the cockpit, but I think it's going to look cool. Um, I know it's not canon or anything. I'm just having fun with this, and hopefully we'll put it on a scenic display base. So that's the where it's going. I still have to clean this one up, obviously. I primed over this one just to make you know help me see what needed to be cleaned up. I printed that on my filament printer, and it turned out pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. And uh, hopefully we'll have a nice little scenic display base uh, once we get to that point. So from here, I'm going to um, clean everything up. Now that you saw how everything's done on the inside, I'll be gluing this body together. There'll be some panel lines, uh, not panel lines, but seam lines that I'll have to uh, dress. Um, it's a little tight back here, probably from just all the modifications I've done. Uh, I think there's a gap in here I'll have to fill you can see how I've been working on smoothing that out. And, uh, but otherwise, I think it's looking pretty cool. 
Now, as you can see here, I have my SIP all closed up and a coat of primer on it. I did a little bit of uh, had to do a little bit of work on the seams right here. There's some a little bit of some imperfections going on right in here. I may try to touch this up a little bit more and reprime that before I get going any further. Um, but it did close up, and most of the bad seams that were kind of right in here uh, have been addressed. Uh, there was a gap I had to kind of fill right in here, so that's been taken care of. So overall, I think it's pretty good. Um, like I said, a few minor imper imperfections here. So I do have a little bit more cleanup. I'm going to do one more pass with some sanding to catch some of those rough spots. And uh, mostly just right in here, you can see a little bit of the uh, glue that I used to fill in. It was just some CA glue I used to fill in that gap and a little bit of a raised area. So I need to sand that one more time. I've uh, primed and put a black coat on my uh, solar panels here. And I think they're looking pretty good. So they're about ready to go. And I've started on a scenic display base. And so what I have in mind is kind of like uh, flying through this little canyon. Um, just got some styrofoam. styrofoam. I had this little hobby board. I got a, a Dollar General for a few dollars. And uh, so I'll make a good place where I can put my batteries and such and my switch. Um, a little bit of styrofoam. Uh, this is just packing styrofoam whenever I can find a really dense, uh, thick, kind of heavy-duty styrofoam. I keep that. It, it works pretty good. Um, the really light, fluffy stuff doesn't work well. It breaks apart real easy and makes a mess, whereas the, the denser styrofoam tends to work pretty good on my uh, cutting board. Uh, as you can see here, this is actually kind of three levels that I've uh, cut and used a... Uh, uh, hot uh, foam cutter to kind of dig in here. And I've also took the uh, torch. As you can see here, I got a little carried away. I did this outside um, because of the fumes. I took it outside and kind of melted it in. It's just white glued into place. I also put some white glue kind of all over it to start protecting it. And uh, But from here, we're going to make up a mixture of um, uh, a sealant kind of with some Mod Podge and paints and probably some sand or something mixed in to kind of cover all this and protect the uh, side. So my thought is to have the um, X-Wing, not X-Wing, TIE Fighter flying through some through here, maybe having like some kind of water effect of some sort. I haven't worked out all the details. I know that I've um, took a piece of copper tubing that's a slightly bigger that I can fit this in. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here so when we put the uh, water effect I don't have to worry about the ship I can add it in later but that will give us our mounting point for my ship so that's where it's headed and we'll just come back once we get a little bit further on all right as you can see here I have my base coat on and that was a mixture of this apple girl dark blue gray I also had some, a little bit of blue to uh, get it a little bit bluer, and I think I put a few drops of white just to lighten up a little bit to get that kind of blue-gray color going. Here I have my masking on. You see this one where I've removed the masking. I also did a little bit of touch-up painting. You always get a little bleed through uh, on some of these parts, so pretty happy with how uh, that's looking. And just to kind of show you on this wing right here, we'll go ahead and then... Uh, See if we can remove this. So it's always satisfying when you get a, a good masking job. Just a little bit of touch up paint, like here and here. Not a big deal. I'm really happy with how all that is looking. And there we go. Really happy how that's looking. You can see here the main body. I still have the uh, canopy masked off. I still have some weathering. Uh, I think I want to do some pin washes trying to bring out this um, all the panel lines. I'll probably use like a dark gray. I don't know if I want to go with black. That might be a little bit too stark. I have some touch-up painting to do. I do have a little bit of some seams showing, but it's not much I can do. It's just going to have to be um, what it is at this point. Uh, clean up on these rings here that I painted with like a charcoal gray. So we'll have attach our wings on to it. 
once I'm ready. I don't want to permanently attach now, but I'm be happy with how that's looking. I think it's going to be a nice effect. My lighting, I checked my lighting, it's still working. Um, display place I'm working on, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go with I'm not 100% um, happy with it right at the moment. And I might just put this on a simple display base for now. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'm still working on it. We'll just see if I can, um, if it turns out. Um, but that's where I'm at. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get this finished up, our ship finished up with some panel line washers. I might do some dry pastels with a little bit of weathering on some of the parts. And of course, attach our wings. Um, these are the end caps that go in there. We'll put those on later. But I'll hold off on putting that all, all down there for now until we get ready to attach it to a display base. All right, well, here's the progress on my display base, as you can see here, starting to come together. Um, so what I did is um, once I got the styrofoam over, I went over some Mod Podge, mixed in with some sand and some paint, did that, uh, added it all in, uh, painted all that uh, kind of just a uh, dark color for the time being. But then I went in and on my little stream that I'm going to be making here. You can see I have some rocks. These are just some uh, rocks I uh, found out in my yard. I have a little pile. I'm not sure why they're so small, but um, they're very, uh, because of their size and the way they are, I thought they'd be good for mulling. So I went and got me a glass full. I also have some of this uh, coarse brown ballast that I mixed in. And I just uh, put that all on here with a mixture of kind of white glue and some water to let that and alcohol to break up um, the surface tension so it can seep all in and let that dry to make kind of my uh, stream bed here. And you can see I have some greenery here and I just did a little bit of this uh, coarse turf green and I have some army painter swamp tufts that I've kind of mixed in. Now, I'd, I'm not done yet. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do a little bit of hand painting to mix up some of the colors on the tops, and I'll probably do a little bit more of it. Um, so I want to have a water effect. Of course, I have where my model is going to go into place for my water effect. Uh, I've used this before. Just see if I can get in. This uh, resin water. got this uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. It's not meant for deep pores. It's only meant for like a small surface area. Um, if you read the instructions, I think it, you're only supposed to do like uh, no more than three millimeters at a time, and then you can repeat to do. So it's not really meant for those deep pores, but it should work great for this. I'm just wanting to have a little bit of water thing running through here, so we'll have a water effect. And there's no mixing, you just pour it. Now this has been sitting for a few years. I uh, used it on my Dagobah diorama, and it worked well, and it uh, still looks fine. Um, seems to be okay, so we're going to use that a little bit more. Uh, oh, I also did some oil washes once I got that. I My base color for my diorama uh, was this uh, khaki, and I just uh, thinned that down, airbrushed it all over everything once I had everything glued into place. Uh, I did some individual painting back on the stream beds to break up the colors again. And then, um, but I did some oil washes, some browns. Um, different shades of browns and reds to kind of get it in there. And once all that was done and dried, I clear coated it and went back over for a little bit of dry brushing on my original khaki color to kind of bring out the highlights. So pretty happy with all that. Again, I need to kind of paint this black. I have to wire it up. Now, my model is complete, as you can see here. I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, again, this is a non-canon kind of a hodgepodge ship that I made between using a Ravel First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter and some 3D printed um, Interceptor type solar panels on it. But I think it's turned out pretty cool looking. So, and it's out of can and it's going to sit uh, on our display base. And I'm going to try to do some lighting. I got some uh, filaments rigged up here. I got to paint this so you don't see it. I got these uh, green filaments and I've had a hole cut in here. Or we'll see how that turns out. Not 100% sure that's going to work or how that's going to look, but we'll see how that turns out. But uh, these will just run off of three volts and they're really bright. So, and I've, to do that, I've had this uh, copper pipe or copper tube and you can see I have some wiring. And this wiring is just um, some little telephone wiring. I have a huge spool of this. You just have to kind of straight um, 
cut away this outer cover and you'll get these uh, long uh, insulated strands of wiring and as you can see here it's uh, pretty thick or it's pretty stiff is a better word I guess you say it's not thick it's actually pretty thin um, so you can kind of bend it in the shape and it will hold its shape so I'm going to try to clean that up and of course I'm going to paint it so you don't see those different colors but that's the wiring that I'm using uh, just kind of threaded it through this tube to hold those in front of their ship we'll see how that turns out if not I'll just get rid of it um, I had an old B-Wing model that's kind of busted up, so I uh, rusted out the uh, wing and uh, it's going to just be a, a little bit of interest. I'll probably have it sitting somewhere on the display model. Um, thought about using this uh, ATSD head that I also rusted out. It just um, didn't look quite right. I think it was taking up too much space and I'm not sure what kind of scale it is to our um, TIE interceptor. Um, the pilot seem to be close to about the same size or would be about the same size so I'm guessing that's similar in scale uh, but it just seems kind of off seem like this should be bigger so I'm not going to use that I'm just going to have some other, I might add a few more things um, but this is not a big display base so I don't want to get too busy on it and have kind of a clean look so where you can actually see the uh, ground that I'm working on so I'm going to go ahead and finish this project and when we come back we'll look at um, the completed diorama. All right, well, here is my completed uh, customized TIE Fighter using the Revell uh, First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter, uh, TIE Interceptor, customized TIE Interceptor. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the model came out. As you can see here, I couldn't quite get the uh, LED filaments uh, working. I was just having problems getting them straightened up and they kept coming loose and it just kind of looked weird. So I scratched that idea. You can see here I put on some of these uh, Bandai blaster bolts that come with their models um, to give it a little uh, excitement, a little movement, I guess you would say, uh, a little bit more detail. And they look okay. Um, so, but as far as the actual uh, interceptor, uh, I'm really pleased with how the paint job came out, I like the kind of the gray blue colors and the black um, color scheme. And it's a, a pretty nice size model, as you can see here. It's probably about six inches long, so a little bit bigger than most of the models that you can get. And uh, the engine lights are working, and this is powered off a nine volt uh, battery under here with a little rocker switch that I just kept under here. And uh, I'll set this back down. And then you can see that the engines uh, light up, which gives us a nice effect. I do like the bigger engines on the uh, first order TIE fighters. They just look more practical, I guess you would say. And uh, my diorama, you can see the water effect. Now for the water effect here, I um, use a little bit of a mixture of this realistic resin water. I got Hobby Lobby. And I'll talk more about that in just a sec. And I also use a little bit of this UV resin with uh, the uh, black light uh, to kind of seal. I put some tape on the sides here to kind of hold in my water and then sealed that with some of the UV resin to keep it from leaking. It worked pretty good. I did have one minor leak over here that I had to quickly kind of fix. I was able to fix it before it got too bad. Uh, but then I used this uh, resin water to pull uh, do the, uh, the majority of the work here. Uh, now about this product, if you want to use, this is not meant for deep pours. The plus size is that it's just, you just pour it out and let it dry. There's no mixing or weighing or anything like that. It's just you pour it onto your surface, um, but it says not to do more than about three millimeters or one eighth inch at a time because it has to dry. So even in this small depth that I have, that's several layers that I had to pour. It kept going into the rocks, I guess, and um, so I had to let that dry and I think I ended up doing like three layers to kind of get it to this where it was just barely kind of covering the rocks. I did use the UV resin on some tricky places that this was for some reason this wasn't covering uh, but it is a nice water effect. It has a very clear look to it once it dries and again it's really easy. There's no mixing or anything like that and so if you're just looking for like a surface water then it's not a bad product. It dries overnight and you, by the next night you can do another 
layer or two, but definitely not meant for deep pours. Um, my terrain came out pretty good. Um, I think my color's a little muted here. I probably should have did the creek bed with uh, maybe a lighter or darker color to give some contrast because it's kind of blurs. All, all my colors are just kind of blurring together. That's why I try to add in some more greens, just kind of break that up a little bit, but it still came out a little muted. So just something to add a little uh, personality to the display as the looks, you know, my intent was for the interceptor to look like it's flying down this uh, creek bed, falling away, shooting at something or another. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed the project. Until next time, everybody have a good one.